with John Brody, Jay Randolph, more than 80,000 at the Coliseum. Magnificent day. This one has the trappings and the excitement already, John, of a playoff game. Ready to go as the Pittsburgh Steelers, Gary Anderson will put it in play. Montgomery and Williams back to receive. It comes to Clee Montgomery. He's at the 20, 25, out to the 30, 35. 38-yard line, the return of 26 yards. The stop made by Clayton, number 33. So the Raiders go on offense. A record of 11 and 4 coming into today's game. Mark Wilson at quarterback with the brilliant Marcus Allen, Kenny King, Branch Barnwell, and Christensen. Christensen's caught 76. Dalby at center with Marsh and Marvin, Davis and Lawrence. First down at the 38-yard line. Crowd still coming in, sun shining brightly. Hope you'll enjoy it wherever you are. And out of the eye formation, they call on Marcus Allen. And Allen hit behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Merriweather, number 57, the fine linebacker. Happy to welcome you just joining us who've been watching New England and Indianapolis. Jay Randolph along with John Brody as we look at the Steelers defensive unit. Goodman, Dunn, and Nelson up front. Merriweather, Little, Cole, and Hinkle, the linebackers for Chuck Knowles Club. And Woodruff, Washington, Shell, and Williams in the secondary. Second down and 11. Wilson for the first time throwing way over throws. That ball looked like it might have slipped away from him, John. He looked like he was trying to get it to the veteran Cliff Branch. No doubt it fell out of his hand, Jay, but uh, it's the sort of thing that if, if the Steelers can do effectively, they will put a big rush with six or seven players on, on Wilson. He has days where he's very hot, picks those, those uh, blitzes apart. Other days, he's not quite as hot and... Uh, Doesn't work so well unless he gets it going down the field. That's right. Here is third down, about 11, as the Steelers go into the prevent defense. They take those inside backers out. Harvey Clayton's in there as the nickel back and the throw to the near sideline, intended for the tight end, Todd Christensen, under throw. And I'll tell you something, Todd Christensen was covered like a shadow, but Marcus Allen was running cleanly in the middle. See number 32, he's standing with nobody anywhere near him. Wilson obviously picked his target before he looked at the field. That's what happens when you do. Made up his mind and didn't change his mind. <laughs> Putting time. Ray Guy of the Raiders averaging 42.1. And there's Lewis Lips, the exciting rookie. Both teams, of course, involved in a need to win here this afternoon. Cincinnati beating Buffalo. If the Steelers lose, they would not win the Central. This punt comes down to the 30-yard line and bounds out of bounds at about the 31. The Raiders playing for the home field advantage in the wild card game next weekend against Seattle. A win here for them, and they would host that game right here. 31-yard punt, and the Steelers set to go with Mark Malone at quarterback, Abercrombie, Pavlik, veteran John Stallworth. Lips, the rookie, and Daryl Nelson, also a rookie. First down, the ball just over the 30-yard line. Rostowski, Wolfley, along with Webster, Long, and Ilkin up front for the Steelers. And the throw to the far sideline complete as Malone put it on consignment to John Stallworth, and the linebacker, Martin, 53, made the tackle. Pickup of six on the play. The Raiders defensive unit with Long, Kinlaw, and Lyle Alzado. Van Pelt, Millen, Squirek, and Martin are the linebackers for Tom Flores. Hayes and Haynes, Davis and McElroy, fine secondary. Second down and about four. Ouija Thompson, 87, in the lineup as a wide receiver now. That's him going in motion. Pitch back to the single setback, Abercrombie. Abercrombie run out of bounds at about the 42-yard line by Lester Hayes. Abercrombie, there you see, 499 yards as he picked up six. He's carried the ball 132 times now without coughing it up. Well, I think it's not a very uh, large uh, gain per carry 
routine, but, but Abercrombie is one who has come on late in the season, and they feel if they're going to do any good and get into the playoffs, he's the one fellow that can really do them some good once they get there. Malone, 53.8 completion percentage. First and 10 for the Steelers from their own 42-yard line. Lips going in motion and the handoff to Abercrombie, and there wasn't much there as Matt Millen, the linebacker inside, filled the hole. You know, Jay, we've got a, a young player that hasn't played an awful lot. Number 74, the right guard, Terry Long, 5'11". That time, he, but he, he was uh, one of those uh, survival fellas in the, in the services, special services. He has gained almost 100 pounds over the last three years, and they say he can, from a standing jump, dunk a basketball, and he's got strength that is superior to even Mike Webster, so uh, they may have something. He's a remarkable athlete. On second down and six, this is Frank Pollard. Pollard getting out to the 47, met there by Reggie Kinlaw. We'll show you the scores. Oh, look at this one. My gracious, the Cardinals coming back from that one. Doesn't make you happy, does it? Well, man? you know, I'm a... <laughs> Cincinnati over Buffalo in the fourth quarter, and of course that puts the pressure on Pittsburgh. Tampa Bay really doing it to the Jets. Chicago banging Detroit this afternoon. New England over Indianapolis. Many of you saw that game. It is third down and three. Malone hands it off to Pollard. And Pollard is close to the first down. I don't know if you'd call that second act for John. It, it was continuous effort. He did quite a job before Mike Davis, 36, made the tackle. Well, he's their inside running back, and you talk about second effort. Sometimes it looks very easy from up here. When you get down low, you can see the effort being, being expanded by number 30. When they get from tackle to tackle, he's the man that does their job. Those legs were really churning. One of the Raiders, Van McElroy, who has been voted to the Pro Bowl again, number 26 out of Baylor, shaken up on the play. They're going to take a measurement here as we show you Cleveland leading Houston in the fourth quarter. Green Bay winning over Minnesota. It is a first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Van McElroy up and coming off under his own power. George Anderson and H. Ron Martin do the training for Tom Flores and the Raiders. And Stacy Torin, number 30, will come in to take over at the free safety position. Mentioned earlier, Jay, that uh, when the Steelers play exceptionally well, put a lot of points on the board, it's generally due to their out outside receivers and Mark Malone throwing the ball very well. But against the Raiders, they really can't afford to do that on a steady diet because the defensive line for the Raiders is very explosive, and they, anytime they know that quarterback's going to be back in the pocket, it makes it tough. The Steelers now at the Raiders. 48-yard line. And Malone gives it to Abercrombie. Penalty markers down. Abercrombie getting across the 45 down to the 43. Number 53, Rod Martin, the right linebacker, making the tackle. Five-yard pickup if the play stands. Offside, Raiders. Red Cashin, 13th year of officiating in the National Football League, a graduate of Texas A&M, our referee. Offside. Number 36 on the defense, still first down. Call went against Mike Davis, the safety man. And it'll be a pickup of five as they march it off. And first down, five for the Steelers. You talk about systems getting geared to play big ball games. Mike Webster this morning was down in the coffee shop at 4 a.m. His coach, Bill Myers, came down and said, isn't it a little bit early? He said, no, it's really getting late. <laughs> This is a very big game for these two clubs. Abercrombie inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Brad Van Pelt, number 91 on the tackle. As you get a good look at Abercrombie coming into today, a 4.3 rushing average. He's the big play threat for Pittsburgh on the ground. No doubt about that. They've run the ball very well in this first drive. When you pick up four or five yards a pop and they feel they have to do that to keep the pressure on the Raider defense, uh, you can move the ball down the field and very few people have done that. Abercrombie 15 yards on three carries, another measurement. And a reminder, the Steelers need to win to win the Central. Just short. 
There's a final right there. Cleveland defeating Houston 27 to 20. And of course, again, we'll remind you the Raiders need the victory for the home field advantage next weekend against Seattle in the wild card game. And there are some home, home field advantages that are more important than others. And certainly in Seattle, theirs is a big one. Denver doing quite a job yesterday up in that dome in Seattle, Washington. First down for the Steelers. Very impressive drive. That's Lips going in motion. Malone throwing back. Intercepted. Coming up the far sideline. Mike Haynes. Haynes still on his feet at the 40. Midfield and out of bounds. Welcome those of you who have been watching the Cleveland-Houston game as Mike Haynes the nine-year veteran from Arizona State has just intercepted. Here's a replay. Well, Malone is trying to get down the field to any, either one of his wide receivers, on this case, John Stallworth, who's having a great year, but the inside man, the linebacker underneath, forced him to throw the ball high. Haynes saw the play the whole way, made a fine interception, then picked up some blocks, returned it down to the 47-yard line, first and 10 Raiders. That's John Brody, and I'm Jay Randolph, and happy to have you with us. More than 80,000 at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And the Raiders after the turnover. First down at the 47-yard line. And play action by Wilson. Now he's in trouble. Going to hoof it. Gets to the 45 and out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A pickup of about seven on the play as David Little, number 50, the linebacker, ran him out. Good coverage down there, John, and he did what he could do. There's a final. Tampa Bay playing very good late in the season with a victory over the Jets today. Ball is spotted just inside the 40-yard line. Cincinnati still putting it on Buffalo. No Maybe they question. don't feel they've got it. Oh. Ball is just inside the 40-yard line. Make it second down and two. Hawkins doesn't get the first down. Hawkins out of Nevada, Reno, averaging 3.5 per carry. Willis, number 93, made the tackle. There's the man that came up with the interception. Mike Haynes, that was the 35th of his career. Now the Steelers will beef up their defense as Kansas City has an early lead down at San Diego. Final. Tampa Bay game. Victory for Tampa Bay. John McKay's troops finished up the season well. This pass is complete. Marcus Allen did a good job of spinning around and making the catch. And now they wave it off, call it incomplete. Because when he hit the ground, the ball was gone, and you must come down on the ground with it. That was a quick throw by Wilson. Pretty good pressure being exerted by the Steeler defense right now. In the first drive, they were able to get to him with five or six linemen. This time, they only needed four. Never had the ball. Oh, the Raiders cannot take advantage of the turnover. Ray Guy out of southern Mississippi. This is his 12th season. Doesn't seem like that long. That's Lips back to receive. I bet it seems that long to him. <laughs> Welcome those of you who have watched Tampa Bay defeat the Jets. Jay Randolph and John Brody at the Coliseum in Los Angeles where the Steelers and the Raiders are going at it. No score first quarter. We just had a 39-yard punt from Ray Guy and the Steelers will get the football at the 20-yard line. Up to now, we've seen the Steelers move the ball very well, turn it over on a pass interception, and the Raiders not able to take an opportunity and get a score on it. If the Steelers win, they are the AFC Central champions. If the Raiders win, they play the wild card game here against the Seattle Seahawks next weekend. Mark Malone. Quarterbacking the Steelers. That slips going in motion. Give to the second man through Abercrombie. He got about three. Rod Martin made the tackle. Rod Martin made the tackle, but Howie Long exhibits why he is considered by so many to be the best defensive lineman in this game. 
People don't try him very often. When they do, they generally make a mistake. Number 75, watch him stand up his man at the line of scrimmage. Now, when you take care of a, of a running play that's coming at you that way, the linebackers and the rest of the pals can get in there pretty easily. He's been elected to the Pro Bowl. It'll be second down and eight. Malone may have called an audible here. The pitch back coming to Pollard. Pollard cutting it in across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Reggie Kinlaw out of Oklahoma made the stop. He plays that middle guard or nose tackle position for the Raiders. Pollard with 773 yards and a four-point rushing average. Five touchdowns. Heavy rains here last evening. John, you were on the field earlier. It's in pretty good shape considering. It's in excellent shape considering uh, the weather they've had down here, but it's getting a little sandy right now. I mean, it's it's good for offensive linemen, you would think, but uh, hadn't looked that way so far today. Rich Ehrenberg, the rookie from Colgate, now in the backfield for the Steelers. And Malone throws and completed the 36-yard line. A fine catch by the rookie Lips. Picks up nine yards. Tackled by Lester Hayes, number 37. More than anything, Jay, Lewis Lips is strong. And for a man to come down with people draped all over him and get his hands on the ball and not let anybody shake it loose, it illustrates that fact. And uh, the Steeler players feel that although he's very quick, he's a great, he's a great pattern runner, his biggest asset is strength. And a first down for the Steelers. 87, Ouija Thompson in the game goes in motion. They pitch it to Abercrombie. And Abercrombie gets good yardage near the 45-yard line before the linebacker inside, number 58, Jack Squirek, makes the play. The Steelers have moved the ball well here in the first quarter. And they're doing something that's very sound, technically. They're putting two people on both the outside defensive ends and the linebacker. They're trying to play a three-on-two game. They'll take their offensive tackles. They'll, they're, they're cutting down with their tight end. They're running their flanker back in there. And if you can nullify those fellas on the outside, you've got a good chance because it's hard for them to contain from the inside the way they play their cornerbacks. Second down, a little more than one for the Steelers. And getting the first down and more is Pollard. I'll tell you, that offensive line of the Steelers at the moment is doing a bang-up job. He picked up nine yards on the play. The tackle made by Squiring. Excellent coordination. Number 74, Terry Long. We mentioned to you he's just a rookie, but he does exhibit his strength here, and Mike Webster's always going to get that seal-off block. That creates a pretty good hole. Another first down. The Steelers, 44 yards on nine rushes. Malone has thrown three times. He's completed two, actually three, through one for an interception. Again, it is Paul. First down as he drives inside the 35-yard line. Jay, we saw, we've seen the offensive line jumping off the, at the line of scrimmage, really getting the best of it. Take a look at number 99, the Raider Sean Jones, their first draft choice. They're sending their offensive line right at people. This is a little fooler play. Still pretty effective. He had a shot at him, but it took the defensive back McElroy to make the play, and he's made a lot of tackles this year. The Raiders and the Steelers. Two teams with great traditions over the years. Pollard cutting it back in. Didn't get much this time as Van McElroy, who was shaken up early in the game and is now back in there at free safety, came up to make the tackle. McElroy number 26. Let's watch McElroy as he comes well, up. He comes up because their cornerbacks play bump and run so much, there's no force from them. So that, that free safety has to be ready to come up to force any sort of running play off out to the outside of the tackle. He hesitates very little. Elton Veals is in the backfield for the Steelers for the first time. The rookie from Tulane, number 38. Malone goes long and complete. Walter Abercrombie could not hold it. They got a perfect matchup. They got Walter Abercrombie out there on Matt Millen. And I mean to tell you, when they get that one-on-one -on -one situation, you've got to hit it for six points or you get in trouble. Now, McElroy is the deep man. He knows they're in trouble. He's got very little play. He can't get there in time, but Abercrombie doesn't hold on. That 
it's the first time that one of Malone's passes has hit the ground. And uh, it came close to being a very fine reception. 4.51 to play, first quarter, no score. Third down and eight. Over the middle, it is complete to Stallworth and a first down at the 17-yard line. Davis, the extra defensive back, number 45 on the tackle, 15-yard pickup. Malone is very sharp early in the ball game. He's back there, and he has been up and down throughout the year, but when he's sharp, he seems to he seems to exude poise. He comes back. He's going to Stallworth the whole way. He beats James Perry easily. Just a little game of pitch and catch. Malone, early in the season, had a concussion, was out. Again, a concussion against Miami, out for a while. A quick hitter right up the middle. That's Pollard. And Pollard takes it inside the 10-yard line before McElroy, number 26, makes the play. Wolfley, Webster, and Long are blowing the interior line for the Raiders right off the line of scrimmage. You don't see it very often, but when people are as strong as the Steelers are interior-wise, it can happen. The Bears doing a job today. And Philadelphia out in front of Atlanta in the first quarter, 3 to nothing. The ball is setting at the 10-yard line where it is second down and a long two. The give goes to Pollard, and Pollard is down to the 8-yard line, and again McElroy came up to crack him. They're testing him. They're trying to get just to the outside of the tackle. Again, they're sending two and three people to seal the line of scrimmage. Washington has retaken the lead at RFK over St. Louis. The Cardinals have to win that game or tie it and have a bunch of other things happen to get into the playoffs. <laughs> but they must really win that game to be in the playoffs. If they lose it, they're out of the playoff picture. Malone coming out. Talk things over. Timeout called. The Steelers. Mark Malone. Drafted in 1980 behind Mark Wilson. Again, it might be worth repeating. Mark is one of the very few uh, players who calls his own plays. Chuck Knoll's philosophy is simply that they know more than anyone else about what's going on. I think a few players who have played feel that way. Uh, John Brody might be one of them. Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not. I used to be adamant about it, but I think with all the different defenses and setups that you have today and the, and the computers that they use, I think the coaches and the quarterbacks can get on the same page before the game starts. And who calls them, I don't think, is, is too material. The quarterback always has the option to, uh, to audible. But uh, Mark does a good job in the play calling area. Pollard over 800 yards on the year. He had 175 yards in the seventh week of the season at San Francisco when these Steelers defeated the 49ers. That's the only blemish on San Francisco's record. Today, 41 yards on seven carries. Well, Buffalo got a touchdown. That's not going to make much difference. Like none. <laughs> Third down, about two. Penalty marker down, the throw incomplete. McElroy had the coverage. And illegal procedure against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, a lot of times somebody will say, well, it was illegal motion, number 40 on the offense. Penalty is declined. It's fourth down. John, they were throwing to Ilkin that time on that play. <laughs> well, the man they actually hit, though, was uh, Ehrenberg, and he dropped the ball. That would have given him another chance. Uh, so Ilkin, who is the tackle, was lined up, and uh, apparently it was a tackle-eligible situation for him. Field goal attempt coming. Anderson has made 17 of his last 18. 7 for 8 inside the 30. 26-yard attempt. Craig Colquitt will hold. Gary Anderson from Durban, South Africa. It is up and it is good. And the Pittsburgh Steelers get on the board here at Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles with two minutes and 56 seconds left to play in the first quarter. 
Tom Flores, 47 years old, born in Fresno, California, the head man of the Raiders. Pretty good quarterback in his day. Well, you take a look. He, he will have the best record of any coach going into the playoffs. Uh, he's been quiet, but he's been so effective since he's been the coach of the Raiders, and uh, Al Davis knows that. Next Saturday, exciting bowl game action. NBC Sports presenting the Florida Citrus Bowl from Orlando, Florida. That's at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. The Bulldogs of Georgia meeting the Florida State Seminoles. And when those two teams get together, they like to shoot it out. I'll tell you, that's the final now. Cincinnati has done all they could do, John. They have to just sit and wait now. They started a little late. And if they do end up getting in the playoffs, they can... Uh, they can feel a good bit lucky. We've updated the standings for you. That's the situation. The Steelers now must win to gain the playoffs. The third tiebreaker is the better conference record, and Cincinnati has the advantage over the Steelers in that department. Anderson ready to put the ball in play with Montgomery and Williams set to receive it. Steelers lead it three to nothing. Nice high kick, and it's Montgomery bringing it out at the 10. The 15, he's in a little trouble, and he got to about the 19-yard line. The stop made by Chris Brown, number 23, the cornerback, and the Raiders will get set to go offensively, 20-yard return. The series... This the 15th meeting between the Raiders and the Steelers. And the Raiders have really dominated this series in recent years. And that, that happens whenever you have matchups the way these two teams match up. It makes it tough for the Steelers. I mean, they've picked the toughest possible situation to confront in a very critical time. We mentioned that in NFL 84 today, the way these teams match up. And Wilson gets away and throws it away. Barnwell over on the sideline, but the pass way overthrown. It looked like he just decided to get rid of it. He was in a little trouble. He almost got sacked, and uh, now a little shoving down there. He almost lost the ball, and it never did come out of his hand cleanly. Kurt Marsh, number 60, having a small altercation there as they bumped around a bit. It'll be second down. We have 2.36 to play in the first quarter. And the Steelers lead it three to nothing. Marcus Allen is running the football as we welcome those of you who watched the Bengals defeat Buffalo this afternoon. Allen picking up seven yards. He came into the game with 1,030 and a 4.3 rushing average. Eric Williams, number 21, the free safety, made the tackle. Final score, the Washington Redskins, 29, St. Louis, 27, 37-yard field goal, Mosley, in the final two minutes, won it for the Redskins. The Cardinals are out of the playoff picture. Third down conversions for the Raiders. They are 0 for 2. They're facing third down and 2 here. Pittsburgh leads it 3 to nothing. Jay Randolph and John Brody with you. On the run, Wilson, and down we go. Jay, that time it was a... Beautifully executed play by, by Merriweather, but they've got Marcus Allen on a one-on-one. -on -one. They held him up at the line of scrimmage. He couldn't get out. Wilson trying to buy time, came out to the right side. All to no avail, and we've seen them rush five or six defensive people, and they've been successful. And when that happens, it could be a very long day for Mark Wilson. Okay, it looks like he's coming open, but Robin Cole's got him covered all over the field. Wilson knows he can't go there. The result is a sack. And Merriweather with 14 and a half sacks coming into today, a very happy gentleman. Guy standing in his own end zone. Lips back to receive it. Flag down. Flag is down as the ball rolls inside the 40 yard line. It was Scoop Gillespie, I believe, who came in there and made contact with Guy. And I think that's where a punter really illustrates his quality. He was able to put his attention on kicking that ball, and I mean, he had that man all over his frame, that scoop, and he hits his foot just as he gets rid of the ball, 
Ray Guy has been a great kicker for a long time, and that's a pretty good illustration. First down. Now you heard our referee, Red Cashin, indicate the penalty going against number 26 right there. Timeout is called here as we have 156 left to play in the first quarter. The Steelers lead the Raiders. Jay Randolph with John Brody here in the Coliseum. Beautiful day, better than 80,000. As I mentioned earlier, the trappings really of a playoff game here today, John. They are, and I think both teams are playing with that sort of intensity, Jay. And uh, Pittsburgh now has had two opportunities to do something, has uh, only got three points to show for it. Well, after the penalty, dropping the putter, we have another flag down as Wilson throws to his tight end, Todd Critchens. They'll sort this penalty out right now. While they do, let's go to New York, NFL 84. Jay, when you take the red eye back home to St. Louis tonight, you'll find an unhappy town. Time running out, about a 50-yarder by Neil O'Donohue. It is wide to the left. Washington 29, St. Louis 27. The Redskins are the champions of the NFC East. The Cardinals are eliminated. Jay? Costas, hail to the Redskins, and congratulations, too, to those Cardinals. They've come a long way under Jim Hannafin. Mr. Costas, of course, spent many years in St. Louis, my hometown, and they deserve a great deal of credit. Right now, we are looking at first and 15, and the handoff going to Hawkins. Hawkins, fumble, and one of the Raiders picks it up out. 14-yard line, Cliff Branch, the veteran, alertly popping on it as that ball slipped out of there. And something that hasn't been happening to the Raiders in the last four weeks is they've been, they've been getting, getting beat at the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. Now, that play never did look like it was going to break anywhere. Kenny King was running laterally. It's been tough over the years to run against Pittsburgh, but the Raiders aren't having much, uh, much success throwing either at this point. Greg Pruitt, 34, Frank Hawkins, 27. The backfield duo now for the Raiders. Wilson may have called an audible. He gives it to the second man, through Pruitt. And Pruitt is dumped hard, and boy, they are going hard at it at the line of scrimmage. Pruitt, who had carried the ball seven times for only two yards coming into today's game, hit by Edmund Nelson, number 64. And now he's back to even. Uh, you talk you take a look at the hitting that's taking place the Raiders have lost the ball 20 times on fumbles throughout the year uh, and people say that's such an important statistic in the Raiders case they I, I don't know if they could operate otherwise <laughs> I don't know why third down 14 looks like they're coming again Wilson going long down the sideline for Malcolm Barnwell, the speedster out of Virginia Union, the coverage, Wayne Woodruff. They were stride for stride down that white stripe. They're not trying to fool anybody, the Steelers. They lined up with seven men on the line of scrimmage. They said, okay, Dwayne, you just cover Barnwell all over the field. We'll see if we can't get to the passer. And they've done it very effectively. Ray Guy will do the punting. Standing just in his end zone, Lips is back to receive. Guy with two punts, 35-yard average today. This is a dandy. Lips going back, takes it at the 32. Turns it up at the 35. Gets away at the 40, 45 midfield. He's down to the 45-yard line. The exciting young man from Southern Mississippi. Number one draft choice, 57-yard punt, 25-yard return. That's the end of the first quarter. Here in the Coliseum, the Steelers have the lead. Yeah, they're working on Ray Guy there, loosening him up. Lips with that fine return now, only needs 24 yards to set an NFL record for punt return yardage. This pass is complete to the far sideline from Malone to Ouija Thompson. Now it's stolen away. Calling people in. 
they, they'll have a little conference. Ouija Thompson, the receiver, caught the ball on his knees. He was on the ground. Because he was on the ground when he was hit, he was, it was dead as soon as he was touched. Had he not been scrambling around there, uh, that ball went, went out of his arms pretty freely, but it was a correct call. So it is second down and four. The ball just inside the 40-yard line as Tom Flores looks out of the scene. Steelers leading three to nothing. That's Abercrombie at the 35, just inside the 35-yard line. He is wrapped up, making the play Rod Martin, number 53. These fellas are doing a lot of things. Take a look at number 63, first-year player out of the University of Connecticut, Pete Rostowski. Rod Martin finally falls off and makes the play, but that, that's getting the job done. He gains six, seven yards. And I'll tell you, the offensive line, although it's supposed to be a makeshift group, is playing very well. The first quarter statistics, 13 consecutive games now. The Steelers have not given up a touchdown in the first quarter. First down. A handoff goes to Abercrombie. Abercrombie getting a couple before Reggie Kinlaw put the clamps on him. Kinlaw number 62. The MVP of the Orange Bowl game back in 78. And of course, New Year's night, you'll see the Orange Bowl right here. Big day for you. Kicking it off with the Fiesta, followed by the Rose, and then the Orange. The best of the bowls, New Year's Day on NBC Sports. Ball down at the 32-yard line as we are just underway here in the second quarter. Sun shining brightly. A clear, glorious day in Southern California. A handoff goes to Abercrombie, and he is inside the 30-yard line before Jeff Barnes, the eight-year veteran from California, made the tackle. And, John, it's been a very impressive job by this offensive line this afternoon for the Steelers here in the early going. We'll see just how how much confidence their offensive line has right now because it's third down and four yards to go. That's definitely a passing down unless they elect to try and pick it up in two downs. And I don't think you'll see that. Ouija Thompson, 87. Calvin Sweeney, 85 are in there. They spread them out. The Steelers. Malone's in trouble on the run. play is that it took them out of field goal position. Now they've got to punt. That's something that a quarterback as smart as Mark Malone has to think of before he gets trapped. He knows right now where the ball is. They could kick about a 47, 48 yard field goal, but if he gets trapped, they're out of field goal position. Good play by Martin, but it was a mental mistake by Mark. A loss of 10 yards on the play. 10 quarterback sacks this season for Martin and Craig Colquitt. Will do the putting. He's on for the first time this afternoon in that role. Clee Montgomery back to try and have an opportunity to bring it back. Montgomery with that 69-yarder against Detroit on Monday night has a 21.7 punt return yard average. A low liner, and it's going to go into the end zone. He was trying to get it more to the near sideline. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. So we have 12-10 to go in the first half. Next weekend, NBC Sports presents a unique look at the past on Sports World. With John Brody, Jay Randolph at the Coliseum. If the Steelers win, they are the AFC Central champions. If the Raiders win, they get the home field advantage next weekend against Seattle in the wild card game. The handoff going to Marcus Allen. And Allen doesn't get much. Half a yard at the most. Robin Cole was going to the Pro Bowl and has done an excellent job since being moved inside. Number 56 made the play on Marcus Allen. Mark Wilson is out there quarterbacking this club. Plunkett did play some on Monday night. John Brody, is he going to play today? I think you'll see him. I think right now it's critical for Mark to get the ball moving down the field because obviously they've got two healthy quarterbacks now and they haven't had any throughout most of the season. Uh, Mark's got to put some points on the board. On second down, he throws. And it is complete. Penalty marker in the center of the field at the 33-yard line. Branch made the catch. Sam Washington, 41, the right corner, making the tackle. Well, Branch almost made the catch. He was the intended receiver, but the ball went through his hands. A little defensive holding. 
Branch with 26 catches. Six Holding before the pass, game. number 31 on the defense. First down. Ball goes against Donnie Shell. Well, you can't blame him. He's got to handle Todd Christensen, and when it's a one-on-one -on -one coverage, it's a very tough thing to do. He's going to get caught a few times. Shell has 41 career interceptions, the most by any active player, but he's never had one against the Raiders. A lot of time. Wilson throws, and out at the 30-yard line, Christensen makes the catch, hit immediately by Merriweather, number 57, the linebacker. I think the Steelers have, more than anything, taken the personality away from Oakland uh, or the Raiders today because uh, they haven't allowed Marcus Allen to pick up his five and six yards of carry. Now, in the previous four games, he's gained over 400 yards, and it just happens that that's when they play their best football. If his offensive line blows people off the line of scrimmage, Marcus does well, and so do the Raiders. It hasn't happened earlier. The Steelers have allowed a hundred yard game only once that last week to Biner of Cleveland. Oh, he had him wide open. Malcolm Barnwell and threw it behind him. Right at midfield. Eric Williams had the coverage, but he was five steps away. There were two people open. Marcus Allen on the left flank, and of course, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Bramwell was wide open in the middle. Throwing it behind him, there was really nobody if he'd led him a little bit farther. And those are the sort of things that some days Mark does well, other days not so well. One out of five isn't going to get it in this league, and uh, Mark knows that as well as anybody else. Third down coming, and this big crowd in the Coliseum getting a little restless. The Raiders 0 for 4 in third down conversions, but this is very close to the first down. Doki Williams, number 85, made the catch. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Well, they had two people with different viewpoints. One was a little short of the first down. The other gave it to him, and I think they'll rule that it's a first down. Big pass play for Mark. That keeps him alive. First down for the Raiders. You know, it's not like it's not like uh, you're trying to replace your quarterback, but they've got a guy sitting on the bench that's healthy now and hasn't played much in the last couple months, but he took them to two Super Bowls in the last five years. So, I mean, it's uh, nice to have him nice there, to have John. Him. Ten minutes to play, second quarter, Pittsburgh leading three to nothing. Marcus Allen to the outside, 45 to the 49-yard line. Sliding and gliding to his right before Eric Williams, 21, and Wayne Woodruff, 49, made the tackle. This is the first good running opportunity that Marcus has had. When they spread the defense out, you complete a few passes and people get spread out just a step or two. When he gets to the line of scrimmage, he is so explosive at moving to the outside, inside, getting his shoulders square and picking up yardage. That time for a first down. An 11-yard pickup. A little delay, and Allen the other way. And he almost broke that for big yardage. Fine tackle by Robin Cole, number 56. A pickup of five, but if Cole hadn't eclipsed him, it could have been a lot more. And Marcus one time said that a running back can really only do his best when he's been given the, the ball enough so that he allows his natural instincts to take over. And I think it's a very true statement. On Monday night, the Raiders defeated Detroit 24-3. Last Sunday, the Steelers edged the Browns 23 to 20. Penalty markers are down, and it may be too much time. I think it's Henry Lawrence. It started he a little bit too quick. Uh, that's illegal procedure. Lawrence apparently jumping off. False start, number 70 on the offense. Lawrence going to the Pro Bowl, a number one draft choice out of Florida A&M. Lawrence, born in Pennsylvania, Danville, PA, now in his 11th season. I think anybody that's playing for the Raider organization that's uh, a first-string tackle could go to the Rose Bowl. They demand them to keep them off the passer for four and five seconds. <laughs> that may be just a little beyond the call. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of Pro Bowl performers on this field today. On second down, Wilson gets it away, and a penalty marker goes. 30-yard line. It was intended for Doki Wilson. The pass was poorly thrown, but a penalty marker is on the field. Offensive pass interference. I don't think, see, Doki Wilson 
uh, Williams didn't see where the ball was thrown and he restricted uh, Washington from being able to get to it. Now take a look at the pass rush. These fellows were effective early. This is Frank Merriweather, number 57. He gets a piece of Mark's throwing arm and that's why the ball went like a kickoff. See, they're coming right up the middle to put... That's interference. Number 85 on the offense. Still stuck it down. A call against Doki Williams of UCLA. Well, Doki doesn't know why it was because he didn't even see the ball thrown. And, uh, but he actually did impede the opportunity for, uh, for Williams to come in or Washington to come in and pick it off. Ball just shy of the 40-yard line. Eight minutes and 29 seconds to play in the first half, and the Steelers lead three to nothing on a field goal by Anderson. Allen back to the inside to the 42-yard line before he's gang tackled. Uh oh, look out there! This was very predictable. Keith Gary, number 92, was uh, doing a little dance. Looks like he was crushing grapes up in the Napa Valley there. <laughs> well, it's a it's uh oh. Here we go again. Marcus Allen isn't the type to sit back and say, that's okay, fellas, we'll be back. Uh, he gets out there and... Well, there's never been any love loss between these two units. But I, I wouldn't want to fire Marcus up. No, no. Let a sleeping dog lie. Kansas City's been playing great football for John Makovic. They lead 21 to nothing. Atlanta now has taken the lead over Philadelphia 6-3. to three. Philadelphia going to stay in Philadelphia. Good news for the great fans of that city. Safety blitz. Third down and 17. And now we have whistles. They fooled him. He could not find a way to get the proper audible call. Rick Woods was in there before anybody could do anything about it. And you can see that right now the Steelers have had the best of it. They forced Wilson into too much time. And the uh, tempers are also flaring a tad. Allen and Gary again getting involved, and uh, you know the delay of the game. Five yards on the offense, still third down. This activity of the last few minutes, John, has kind of taken this big crowd out of the game. The Steelers are leading at three to nothing. Seven twenty-seven to go in the first half. We're talking to a few of the coaches for the Steelers. They said, you know, the only time that the Raiders don't really play well is when you can get them thinking about you. Uh, physically, and I, I don't know if that's true, but uh, it was kind of predictable that this would happen. Third down and 22. Wilson throwing to the short man, the tight end Christensen, and he only gets to the 43 yard line. A pickup of seven. Robin Cole made the tackle, and plenty of time for the Raiders and Ray Guy. Well played defense. There were no wide receivers open on the play. Obviously, Mark didn't want to come to Christensen when it's third down and 22 unless he has to, and he had to. Ray Guy, three punts and a 42.3 average. Lewis Lips, who is bearing down on Greg Pruitt's NFL record for punt return yardage, set in 83 of 666 yards. Lips across the 20. And gets outside 25 out to the 31-yard line. A stop made by Otis McKinney, number 23. A 13-yard return after a 38-yard punt. We've got a timeout with six and a half to play in the first half. And Pittsburgh leads Los Angeles. With John Brody, Jay Randolph, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. The Steelers leading it. Lips now has set a new rookie record for return average, or return yardage, I should say, beating Neil Colson's set in 75. On first down, the handoff to Abercrombie gets away from one Raider, and now he's in a lot of trouble. But look at that. Oh, he made a good move up the sideline, John. Bill McKell, number 71, knocked him out, but Abercrombie deserves a lot of credit for this play. Some plays, when you get back to the line of scrimmage, you've done more than can be expected. Number 75, Howie Long, comes into the play after he's forced backwards. It looks as though Howie's got him. His strength usually prohibits anybody from getting loose. On this case, Abercrombie did. Picked up three yards. Second down and seven. The Steelers with a three-to-nothing advantage. 
26-yard field goal in the first quarter by Gary Anderson. A little delay. Abercrombie is across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. Lyle Alzado, number 77, made the tackle after a pickup of five. Lyle, born in Brooklyn, went to Yankton, South Dakota. He's a boxing champion there. What a character. He's been around. Yes, he has. Great years at Denver. He's at Cleveland, of course. And it's more difficult at certain ages to play different positions. Now, when you play in a defensive end and you're in your middle to late 30s, You've been through some things. He's there at age 35. Third down and one. First down and more for Pollard. Fumble. The Raiders say they have it. And they do. Van McElroy, number 26, came up with the football. So another turnover. And another turnover is not a good thing for Pittsburgh at this point in the game. They've really had things going their own way. And when you only show three points on the board, having had all the best of it throughout the first half, you're going tough. Here's a Super Bowl flashback. He's got his man stalwart. He's at the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. He's gone. He's at the 20, 15, and he's in for the touchdown. No flags are down. It's a touchdown all the way, 75 yards. Bradshaw to Stallworth, the voice of a great gentleman, Kurt Gowdy, Super Bowl 13. And on first down, the pitch comes to Allen. He's out across the 45 and down to about the 43. Keith Willis, number 93, on the tackle. Pittsburgh continues to play strong defense. We've got those seven men standing at the line of scrimmage. They're not giving much ground there. Here's Todd Christensen. We mentioned that if they're going to run anywhere, he's got to do some blocking. Raiders on the 43-yard line, second down and seven. Wilson has time. He's going long, and it is intended for Barnwell. Penalty marker is down. Again, you cannot tell which way it's going to go. Donnie Woodruff there, number 49, out of Louisville, had the coverage. I get the feeling that it was... tripped him up a little, took the angle away. Critical call, close call. They've gone both ways. And with four minutes and 54 seconds left to go in the first half, the Raiders are going to set up shop at the 10-yard line. That penalty gives them 32 yards to the 10 and a first down. And we've got Dave Casper, the veteran, number 87 in the game now, with Christensen. He's gone, he's gone from 260, listed as a guard, wearing number 69, to where he got back with his old teammates. He's down to 235. And he might be a man to watch here. It is Frank Hawkins, penalty marker down as Hawkins is run out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Hawkins coming into the game with 363 yards and a 3.5 average. And a holding penalty against the Raiders. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Holding during the run, number 46 on the offense, still first down. The call goes against Christensen. It's going to put the ball back out at the 20-yard line. This is Jay Randolph along with John Brody. The Coliseum in Los Angeles. Sun shining brightly. Great day for football. The Steelers leading it on a 26-yard field goal by Anderson in the first quarter. The Raiders, though, with an opportunity here. 449 left in the first half. Wilson going. The pass intended for Doki Williams. Donnie Shell came up to make the play. And that is his first interception against the Raiders in his long career. Number 42 of his career and the first ever against the Raiders, John. And he made it 
a real good one because it looks as though this may be a touchdown to Dokey Williams. The ball was just a little underthrown by Mark Wilson. Donnie Shell does it again. Well, it'll be the Seahawks and the Raiders next weekend. Check your local listings for the day and the time. NBC Sports will be bringing you that one from right here or from the Kingdom. There's a very happy Donnie Shell. He came up with the interception, and it's first down for the Steelers, leading three to nothing. They operate from the 20-yard line. The give goes to Abercrombie, and he is out of bounds near the 31-yard line. And McElroy, number 26, has done an excellent job in the first half and had to work very hard from that free safety spot. Knocked him out over there. So far, Jay, it looks as though uh, the Steelers have been uh, very willing to just let John Stallworth and Lewis Lips play games out there with Haynes and Hayes. And they haven't, they haven't really tried to go to either one of them so far. They're very intent to just running, to run the ball off tackle, make McElroy come up and contain, and it's been effective for them. Second down and less than a yard. Ehrenberg and Pollard now in the backfield. Ehrenberg number 24. Malone incomplete at the 40-yard line along the far sideline intending for Lewis Lips. Now Zeno uh, putting the pressure on. You know, quarterbacks so often get their best licks after they've thrown the ball. And that's when everybody's attention goes astray. Rostowski trying to handle Alzado. Malone never sees him. Oh, how many times he's done that. <laughs> you remember a few hits like that right on the floor of this Coliseum, don't you? Yeah, but, you know, you asked me before uh, how I like playing in L.A. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful Coliseum, but when you're playing uh, Deacon and Merlin and, uh, and Lamar Lundy and Roger Brown, it, it diminishes the enjoyment. A fearsome foursome. They were something special, weren't they? 3-0 Pittsburgh, third down and less than a yard, quarterback sneak. Malone straight ahead. They may want to measure, but it looks to me like he has the first down. Abernathy this afternoon, 51 yards on 11 carries. Pollard, 48 yards on 8 carries, so the Steelers have 99 yards. Abercrombie, I should say. Did I say Abernathy? I'm sorry. 99 on the afternoon. It's okay, Jay. Right? It is a first down. He'll do it again. Probably. <laughs> Clock running with four minutes and 15 seconds left to go in this first half. A good look at Mark Malone. He has the size and strength and a lot of ability. Over the middle, wide open. And on the move with it is Cunningham for the first down at midfield. A little pop pass for 21 yards to Cunningham. You could well expect that when they did throw to their tight end, he'd be open because that's the 11th reception at that position and the first in four weeks. So uh, they haven't exactly featured their tight end. Benny Cunningham got injured early in the year. Daryl Nelson's been playing there. He's another first-year fella. So when they do go, it should be open. Cunningham coming back off injured reserve and a hip injury. Ball spotted at the 48 of the Raiders. Slashing crew, Abercrombie to the 44-yard line. Rod Martin, number 53, stalled him at that point. The clock running with three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half, and the Steelers leading it three to nothing. If the Steelers win it, they win the AFC Central. We'll be bringing you up to date on the scores here in a moment or two, and then, of course, at halftime, NFL 84 with... Bob and Ahmad, Bill and Axe, they'll bring you up to date with highlights and all the news today. Second down and six from the Raider 44-yard line. The little delay, Pollard. Pollard to the 41-yard line. Matt Millen, number 55, on the play. The Redskins knock St. Louis out of the playoffs. Buffalo was banged by Cincinnati. That put the pressure on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tampa Bay, an easy winner over the Jets. Chicago, they're in the playoffs. They beat Detroit. New England got by Indianapolis. Cleveland over Houston. And Green Bay took it to Minnesota today. Third down and two. Pittsburgh, three out of seven on third down situations. And the ball... Slice as high as it hit the intended receiver, Lewis Lips, and bounced 
out to the side. Another illustration of how they've got everything set up. It looks like they're going to be okay. A miss, a misthrown ball. A man not being able to get open and stop Pittsburgh's drives for about the fourth time in a row. Three to nothing. Taking control of the line of scrimmage the way they have is not enough. Craig Coldquit set to do the punting. Lee Montgomery back to receive. for the far side and it goes into the end zone it's going to come out to the 20-yard line didn't get it far enough to his right to get it out of bounds 41-yard punt we're getting a two-minute warning here and we'll be back with more in just a moment another Super Bowl flashback Super Bowl number 10 Bradshaw to Swan Oh, what a combination that was over the years. Pittsburgh beat Dallas 21 to 17 in Super Bowl 10. These two teams have played in seven of the last 10 Super Bowls. Here are the Raiders now from the 20 yard line. Two minutes left in this first half and the Steelers have the lead three to nothing. Wilson throwing wide open. That's Cliff Branch. Branch first down out to the 36-yard line. Sam Washington, number 41, on the stop. 17-yard pickup. Sometimes when you don't see a lot of Cliff Branch, you wonder why, because very seldom does anyone have him covered. Whenever they give him a one-on-one -on -one situation, he'll find a way to get open, and he did by six yards there. Wilson throws again. It's Marcus Allen. Allen to the 45-yard line, didn't get out of bounds. Clock running with 125 to go, an eight-yard pickup. And we're going to get a timeout now, called by the Raiders. Three to nothing, Pittsburgh has the lead. Back with more in a moment. Cliff Branch, 501 career receptions. 13th man in the history of the National Football League to get more than 500. On second down and two, in trouble, Wilson goes down back at the 31-yard line, and it was Brian Hinkle, number 53, the third-year linebacker from Oregon, a loss of 14 on the play. And Joe Gordon has just said so much. He is the publicity director for the Steelers. He said, you know, the one linebacker, although we have two going to the Pro Bowl, who's just had a great year for us is Brian Hinkle. And I guess Pittsburgh's had a tradition of great linebacking, and this year is no exception. Well, you know, when they moved Cole inside, John, this gave Hinkle the opportunity to show what he could do. We'll be back in just a moment. Third down coming up for the Raiders after the sack back at the 31-yard line. Raiders ninth on offense in the National Football League. Coming into today's game, the Steelers seventh on defense. Third down and 16. Wilson pumps, now goes long, and it is almost intercepted. He was going for Doki Williams, and Rick Woods, the extra defensive back, number 22, almost picked it off. That's right. He, was, he got plenty of time to throw the ball. He never saw Rick Woods, but Rick was back there playing center field, saw the ball the whole way. And every time the Steelers have had an opportunity to make either a big turnover or something good happen for them, They've come up empty with the exception of Donnie, Donnie Shell's pickoff in the end zone. Uh, they've had a lot of opportunities in this first half, and it's still only three to nothing. And we have a minute and 11 seconds left to play. Lips is back to receive Ray Guy's fifth punt of the afternoon. Lips moving in on the all-time return yardage records for punt returners. Let's this one go. Uh-oh, now he tried to pick it up, and one of the other Steelers back down there came away with it I think and now we've got a little battle going over at the 30 yard line 50 yard punt and it was Squirick downfield there is Jim Plunkett on the sideline when we see him in the second half United Way salutes Pittsburgh and one of its leading citizens for more than 50 years Art Rooney has guided his beloved Pittsburgh Steelers 
He helped build the foundations of professional football and set a standard of quality that has made the NFL unparalleled in professional sports. His calm, selfless counsel saw his team through the tough early years to the Steelers' first Super Bowl victory in 1975. The Steelers are the only NFL team to win four Super Bowl titles. Art Rooney and his family have been part of the vitality and tradition of the Pittsburgh community. His strong commitment to the United Way and the Catholic charities, which they support, has made him one of the most universally loved and respected citizens of Pittsburgh. And he's still helping others. Pittsburgh is said to be one big family. Art Rooney is the heart of that family. This message furnished by the National Football League. Kansas City. Boy, oh boy, we'll have scores and all the highlights coming up at halftime. NFL 84 and Atlanta now 13 to 3 over Philadelphia. Here it's 3 to nothing. The Steelers lead on a 26-yard field goal in the first quarter by Gary Anderson. David Casper looks like a young boy again, doesn't he? Revitalized, huh? back with his old team. First down for the Steelers. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Abercrombie to the 25-yard line. Brad Van Pelt, number 91, stopping him there. A lot of shoving and dancing going on. Seven-yard pickup on the play. I'm sure they wanted to see if they could move it out from their 20-yard line. So if they do throw the ball, they'll throw it out there around midfield where even a, a Raider pickoff wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be fatal. I don't think they're going to be settling for a three to nothing lead with 40 seconds left, but uh, it looks as though I'm going to be wrong because the <laughs> seconds keep clicking off. We're down to half a minute to play right now. The Raiders down three to nothing. Walter Abercrombie sideline got good yardage before he stepped out of bounds at the 36 he picked up the first down Howie Long and Matt Millen running him out over there a nine yard gain on the play well now this is a, an opportunity for Pittsburgh to score with one long completion or two medium range and they can get the ball 35 yards down the field they've got a great field goal kicker in Gary Anderson maybe the best that's ever played by the time he's finished and I'll be very surprised if they don't put it a little air under it Abercrombie's had a very good first half, 72 yards on 14 carries. Ball just over the 35-yard line. Gary Anderson, who played at Syracuse. He's put the only points on the board here today. Well, they're not going to the air. Abercrombie for a couple to the 40-yard line, and he was wrapped up by number 55, Matt Millen. Time called with 12 seconds remaining. Curious. <laughs> Number 55, Matt Millen. Many of you folks, of course, back in the Keystone State, remember he played at Penn State. He's the Raiders' run defense. He's had six interceptions in his career, and that's pretty good for a man who plays that inside yes. linebacker spot. And doesn't play much during in passing situations. Uh, I think as much as anyone, he emulates the Raider attitude. Played at Whitehall High School in Pennsylvania. There's a good look at the Coliseum. This magnificent structure built in 1923 and hosted the 32 Olympics and, of course, the last Olympics here this past summer. The city of Los Angeles. A very bright and breezy place today. Pretty day here in the Southland here in Southern California. As these two teams get it on for the 15th time over the years, the Raiders lead this series with nine victories, the Steelers with five. They've got three wide receivers to the right side, so I don't think they'll be fooling anybody going down there. And they've got a defensive back all the way downfield at the 20-yard line to the Raiders. And uh, Howie Long took care of the situation as he came across to sack Mark Malone for a loss of 14. Long, who played at Villanova, All-Pro, and like uh, Al Zeto, was quite a boxing champion in college. <laughs> Those two guys in the ring, John, you'd have a tough time. I think Rostowski feels that he was still doing it. 
All right, we come to the end of the first half here at Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Steelers have the lead three to nothing on the 26 yard field goal by Anderson. More in a moment. The Carson High School marching band from Carson, California entertaining here. And the Pittsburgh Steelers lead the Raiders 3-0 back to New York, NFL 84. All right, Jay, and they've asked me to run through the scores once more in the next two minutes. Here we go. Washington over St. Louis today, 29-27. And so the Redskins are the champions of the NFC East. This also clinches a wild card spot for the Rams. This is how the game concluded. Time running out. St. Louis has no timeouts left. Neil O'Donohue tries a 50-yarder. It's wide to the left. The Gallant Cardinals go down to defeat. They are eliminated from the playoff picture. The Rams, as I say, are in as a wild card. And now it comes down to this. If the Cowboys beat the Dolphins tomorrow night, they're in as a wild card and they play host to the Rams. If the Cowboys lose, they're out. The Giants sneak in and the Giants play the Rams at L.A. next week. What a game this was. The Redskins led 23-7 at halftime. The Cardinals rallied back to take a 27-26 lead. A Mark Mosley field goal of 37 yards won it with a minute 33 remaining. Art Monk caught 11 passes on the day for two touchdowns for Washington. 106 for the year, and that's an NFL record. Roy Green caught two TD passes for the Cardinals, one of them of 75 yards. Cincinnati beat Buffalo 52-21. Three touchdown passes for Ken Anderson. If the Bengals win the AFC Central at 8-8, eight eight, it's the worst record ever for a division titleist. Tampa Bay over the Jets, 41-21. Chicago with Greg Landry quarterbacking beat Detroit, 30-13. The Bears had a record 12 sacks, ties the single game record, 72 for the year, and that's a season's record. New England over Indianapolis, 16-10. Craig James had 138 yards. Cleveland beat Houston 27-20. Green Bay over Minnesota 38-14. The pack closes well at 8-8. Eight eight. The Vikings limp home at 3-13, worst season in their history. In the game, many of you are watching Pittsburgh over the Raiders, 3-0 at halftime. If Pittsburgh wins, they're the champs in the AFC Central. If they lose it, the title belongs to the Bengals. The Raiders need to win in order to have home field advantage in the wild card game next week against Seattle. Kansas City is hammering San Diego 28-20 as they approach halftime. If San Diego loses, they'll go 0-8 in their own division, the AFC West, 7-1 against the rest of the world this year. And Atlanta, trying to halt a nine-game losing streak, is in front of Philadelphia. The Eagles know they'll be in Philly hereafter. That's been settled. 13-3 Atlanta as they approach the half. Let's go back to Jay Randolph. Thank you very much, Bob Costas, and happy holidays to all the gang there at NFL 84 from me and from John Brody as we do have a 3 nothing game here, and you've explained all the playoff situations. John, Pittsburgh had a couple of opportunities. They did get the field goal. They do lead it 3 to nothing, And, of course, the Raiders had an opportunity but were thwarted on a very fine play by Donnie Schell. Well, I think the things that I've been most surprised about, Jay, is the way they've manhandled both sides of the line of scrimmage. Now... Uh, the Raiders, their personality is such that, that they're expected to, to dominate in those areas. They certainly haven't. I think if the Steelers had just a couple big plays in the first half offensively, they'd have run the Raiders out of the tub. But being only three to nothing ahead, I think it is it could get tougher. Well, in this second half, it'll be interesting to see if we are going to see Jim Plunkett. I think we, I think we will. I think that his teammates have grown to love Jim. He's come in in these sort of situations in playoff games and big games. He's only lost one throughout his career, and we all know he's taken them to two Super Bowls. I know the coaching staff will uh, get a good look. All right, and we'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. The crowd has been chanting, we want Plunkett, we want Plunkett. Pittsburgh leading three to nothing. There is Jim Plunkett, the former Stanford star. Want to correct one score for you. Kansas City is shutting out San Diego 28 to nothing. Plunkett in 84. Of course, he's coming back with the problems that he had with his stomach muscle. And also, uh, John Brody, a uh, hip pointer that really bothered him as much as anything. Yeah, but those things don't bother him now. And I'll tell you, one of the plus points of Jim Plunkett is that he can handle adversity about as well as anyone that's ever played this game. And... Uh, he stated that, hey, he doesn't really know how he'll play, having not played as much as he'd like. But uh, I'm sure we'll see him. Total yards for the Raiders, 54. A flashing reminder of their problems here in the first half. The kickoff, 
They were also offsides on the kickoff. Yep, and a penalty marker goes down as Ehrenberg was back to take the kickoff. He downed it in the end zone, but it looks like we'll do it again. The referee today, Red Cashin. Red's an insurance executive who has been around the National Football League for a long time. He heads up this crew this afternoon. Mark Demas, the umpire with him. Jay, you can always tell a man that has gained respect when they put him on a game like the Pittsburgh uh, Raider game. And this man has over the years. He keeps control of the ball game, and I think it's necessary in a game like this. Yes, sir. Derek Jensen was the man offside for the Raiders. Oh, we'll do it again, and this time back from the 30-yard line. There is Jensen. Jim Plunkett. Now 36 years old and in his 14th NFL season. Been out of action until his appearance Monday night in Detroit since October the 7th. People seem so concerned with that fact. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, just the not having to take the continual hits can help a quarterback, can help his outlook. And if you'll recall, last year the same thing happened. And we all know how he came back. So came back very strong, culminating it all in Tampa with the victory over the Redskins. The kickoff by Chris Barr and Ehrenberg looking up into the sun had a little problem. Here he comes at the 10, 15, and he gets only to the 17-yard line. Ted Watts, number 20, the quarterback, down to make the play. So the Steelers will start with Mark Malone at quarterback. Abercrombie and Pollard have been doing the bulk of the running. Lips 83, Stallworth 82, the wide receivers. They've used both Nelson and Cunningham at tight end. Cunningham is in there right now. Webster, a pro bowler at center. Wolfley and Long, and Ratowski and Ilkin at the tackles. First down for the Steelers, who lead it three to nothing as we start the second half here in the Coliseum. Crombie is stalled on a big play by the inside linebacker, Matt Millen, number 55. Loss of one. That's the first time the Raiders have won at the line. The Steelers' offensive line did an outstanding job in the first half. It'll be second down and 11. The Steelers ranked 10th on offense, 8th rushing and 15th passing coming into today, and the Raiders were third on defense. Fifth against the pass and eighth against the run. Malone throws the quick out, and Abercrombie makes a fine move and has a first down at the 29. Well, now wait a minute. Let's see, did he get the first down? Very close. And McElroy, 26, made the tackle, and it is a first down. Pick up 13 on the play. Mike Davis had a long way to cover. The strong safety had to handle one on one. Abercrombie, that's a tough assignment. He's been hurting over the past few weeks, so they expected not to play him as much as they have in this ball game, and I think that's true with several of the players. Of course, he had some knee problems in 83. First down from the 29-yard line. Lips comes in motion toward the action, and they give it to Pollard. And Pollard straight up the middle to the 33-yard line. Mike Davis, 36, the strong safety, made the play. Martin, 55 there. It is Alzado and Long at the ends, and Millen and Squirek inside, Van Pelt and Martin outside. The corners are Hayes and Haynes, Davis and McElroy, the safeties for the Raiders. Jim Plunkett licking those fingers and uh, wondering when he will be called on by Tom Flores. Second down, five. Sweeney going in motion. Abercrombie. No, not this time. Big play by Rod Martin. I'll tell you who made the play was Lyle Alzado. He, he got through a double-team block. We mentioned that the Steelers have been double-teaming both ends. That's why you haven't heard an awful lot from Howie Long. 
or have you heard from Lyle Alzado? Watch this, a double team block. When you can split it, and he does right here, he's in a position to force Abercrombie back behind the line of scrimmage, stringing it out. That allows Martin to get in there, Haynes to get in there. Those, play, those plays don't get back to the line. Third down for the Steelers at the 44. They lead three to nothing. We're in the third quarter. Malone throws it away. Ehrenberg, the rookie, was the intended receiver, but Otis McKinney had the coverage, number 23, the extra defensive back. And good job of coverage by the Raiders and a good hand now for this defensive unit as they come out here. The coverage has been best, Jay, when it's been third down on both teams. That's why the score's three to nothing. Colquitt to do the punting. He played at Tennessee, averaging 40.9 coming into today. Montgomery is back downfield. A booming low spiral. Montgomery at the 20. Set up, trying to find the wall. Can he turn it up? He gets it to the 25, the 30, and out to about the 33-yard line. The Steelers, David Little, number 50, made the play. A 47-yard punt, an 11-yard return, and another fight. <laughs> so what's new? A little battle at the 25-yard line. We'll come back with more in just a moment. Well, a moment ago, plaudits from this crowd for Jim Plunkett, who is in the game. Plunkett, 99 of 178 on the season. And on first down, he hands it off to Marcus Allen. And he is collared by Mike Merriweather. Mike Merriweather has been playing defense this year. I mean, just in the in the uh, Pittsburgh tradition. He will be going to the Pro Bowl, and he's been so adept at fooling quarterbacks. That time he looked as if he was in a set-off position out there with the wide receiver. He slipped in at the last moment, had nobody blocking him. He was really looking for Allen. Second down and a long nine. was going to take it for a romp on a delay, but this time Robin Cole, number 56, did the job. Well, you don't find many holes open up when you call a draw play and they blitz. And that means there's eight people, everybody in his own lane. There's nowhere to go. Third down coming up. A ball at the 34, or at the 30-yard line. Third and 13. And L.A. this afternoon, one out of seven on third down conversions. Plunkett being blitzed, rolls out of there. Plunkett doing a good job, gets it away. Boy, Jim did an excellent job. Quick feet, not to be sacked back there, John. Hey, he had to have because he may have lost a little more health had he not been able to elude, elude Merriweather, who We've mentioned he's come in at the right time so often today. I know he studied his positions. He studied the, the tendencies. Frank Hawkins, number 27, was supposed to pick him up the first time. He does help out a little bit the second, but there's nowhere for Jim to throw. Fourth down and 13. One of the Raiders shaken up there. That's Charlie Hanna. Oh, my. Came here in a trade, of course, from Tampa Bay. One of the famed Hanna family out of Alabama. He's learned to play the guard position. He learned it almost overnight, John. Well, as healthy and as deep as the Raider linemen offensively were when they started the season, those who are playing are, are playing hurt now, and uh, sometimes it just happens, and that's what's happened to them. Lips trying to set the all-time record, set to receive the sixth punt of the day from Ray Guy, and it's a poor kick. Gets a good bounce for the Raiders, though and is down at around the 35-yard line. No chance for Lips to return that wobbly kick as it came up short. 34-yard punt. 9.56 left to play in the third quarter. Pittsburgh and Minnesota, Super Bowl IX. Franco Harris, touchdown Pittsburgh. 16-6, to the Steelers won it. Franco Harris no longer with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've still got a few great ones left, number 52 being one of them. The faces have changed drastically on this club, though. 
First down and 10 from the 35 yard line. Malone throws and incomplete. Penalty marker is down. Mike Davis had the coverage against Lewis Lips. Davis was covering. Interference, number 36 on the defense. First down. The interference call against the seven-year veteran from Colorado. It's Davis. hard to predict which way those calls are going to go because the Steelers are calling a lot of underneath delayed type patterns where you try to get the strong safety caught up and it's kind of a pick play, it's what they call it. You cut off of that that pick and uh, so you never know which way that's going to go. Sweeney's in the lineup, number 85, the pitch to Abercrombie. He's to the 44-yard line. Got about three. Howie Long, number 75, making the stop. We checked to see if there was anything wrong with John Stallworth, and the report is he's all right, but they're playing Sweeney at the moment along with Lips. Sweeney, a five-year man who played right here at USC. Clock running with 9.20 to play in the third quarter. The only scoring in the game in the first quarter, a 26-yard field goal from the toe of Gary Anderson. The Steelers are leading. Steelers must win to gain the AFC Central title. If they lose, they're out. Second down and eight. Going to the right, Pollard. And Pollard hit just as he got across the 45. Two yards on the play as Davis made the tackle. The word on Hannah is a twisted knee. We do not know whether he'll be able to return or not. Angeles Raiders and there's Hannah being attended to the Raiders 38 to 9 winners over the skins in Super Bowl 18 they won 27 10 of course over the Eagles in Super Bowl 15 36 all wide open Aaron down the sideline they spread the receivers out all over the field, John, and he came out and found himself uncovered. Otis McKinney finally made the tackle. 14-yard pickup. The third down receiver for the Steelers throughout the year has been Aaron Bird, and he was playing all the time early in the season, but he still remains their third down receiver. Raiders got their defensive line uh, Defensive backs mixed up actually ran into each other, and that's why Aaron Burke came so free. He had 36 catches coming into today's game. All-time leading rusher at Colgate, even ahead of Mark Van Egan and Marv Hubbard. First down, lots of time for Malone, and he completes it at the 30-yard line. There is Stallworth. Stallworth, who come back in, Mike Haynes, number 22, made the tackle. That's quite a matchup there, a pickup of 10. Well, well, you mentioned just a minute ago that uh, Sweeney was playing in place of Stallworth, but you know that if they're going to throw that thing down the field, they're going to use number 82. One-on-one, -on -one, he's as good as anyone. Stallworth coming in today with a team record, 76 catches. Better than 390 career catches now. 65 career TDs. First down at the 30-yard line for the Steelers, and it looked like number 74, Terry Long, the rookie from East Carolina, who John was talking about in the first half, jumped off. Long start, number 74 on the offense, still first down. You mentioned Long. He came out of the special services out of the Airborne. He only played one year of high school football, and he, he did muscle up from 160 pounds to the 272 he carries around now. That's some story, really. <laughs> they have. When you can stuff a basketball at 5'11 from a standing <laughs> jump, that's you're an athlete. First and 15. Banging up the middle goes Pollard. Gets about three. Lyle Alzado on the tackle. Washington defeats St. Louis, knocked the Cardinals out of the playoff picture. And Cincinnati bombs Buffalo. That game, of course, put pressure on Pittsburgh. Tampa Bay, a winner. 
Chicago defeating Detroit. The Bears are in the playoffs. Indianapolis lost to New England. It was Cleveland over Houston, 27 to 20. 38 to 14, Green Bay a winner over Minnesota. Kansas City leading 28 to nothing down at San Diego. And Atlanta 13 to 3 over Philadelphia. Here it's 3 to nothing, the Steelers. Steelers second down and 13. And incomplete, going for Benny Cunningham. And good pressure from Rod Martin, the linebacker on the right side. Martin. Out of USC. You know, you'd have, you'd have expected the Steelers to have a little more trouble offensively picking up the different games that Martin plays with his interior linemen, but they really haven't been fooled. No one has come through clean to hit Malone outside of Alzado early in the, in the first half, and uh, that's commendable because they've got Terry Long, they've got uh, a, a few young players in there that you would expect to be confused, and they haven't been. Terry Long made those special forces very special when he was banging around in his airborne gear, I'll tell you. Third down and 12. Over the middle, complete. Very close to the first down. Stallworth went up, picked it off. Got a pickup of about 11 or 12. They're just short of the first down as Mike Davis made the tackle it's number 36. A, it's about two yards short. Malone just could not afford the time. He couldn't wait any longer. He knew he had to pick up a little more than he got. Take a look at the offensive protection. This, this is a group of fellas that are, <laughs> are, are facing a blitz very well. Malone gets rid of the ball perfectly. There's no linebacker between him and Stallworth. Just not quite enough for the first. 39-yard field, field goal attempt by Gary Anderson. He's hit on 18 of his last 19. It is up, and it is no good. who has been so sharp, comes up empty. 5.49 to play in the third quarter. 3-0 Pittsburgh, Kansas City. Well, they've been rolling along. Victories over Seattle and Denver the past two weeks. Now 35 to nothing over San Diego. First down for Plunkett. Plunkett throws and it's complete at the 33-yard line. The catch made by Barnwell, the tackle by Woodruff. Now, this, these fans are a little concerned because offensively the Raiders have done so little. That's the first completion for Plunkett. But when you've only got the ball for 13-59 as opposed to 25-12 for Pittsburgh, the offensive line has dominated the control factor. Barnwell makes a nice route, well-thrown ball. Plunkett's timing doesn't look off for me. No, indeed. That's the first catch of the game for Barnwell. <laughs> Plunkett to Hawkins. Hawkins out over the 35. Edmund Nelson, number 64. Played at Auburn. Made the tackle. Lock is running with five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in this third quarter. The Steelers. 10 of 12 players drafted on the 49-man roster, so that's indicative of how much the Steelers have changed for the 84 season. Plunkett giving to Allen. Allen stiff arms out to the 45-yard line before Woodruff makes the tackle. First down. And this crowd beginning to get into the game again. Pickup of seven yards. Ball at the 45-yard line. The Raiders with a record of 11 and four, and the Steelers eight and seven. The Steelers must win. The Raiders would like a victory, so they would host the wild card game next weekend against Seattle. Plunkett. Did not hold on. Down at the 44-yard line, Sam Washington banged him pretty good. Number 41 right there. Washington played at Little Mississippi Valley. He did, but I think more importantly, Doki Williams got his feet caught and could not catch the ball cleanly. But take a look at the secondary now. As he runs the corner pattern on the left side of your screen, he's wide open. The ball is thrown a little bit too far down the field for him. But it, he was so far open, I still think he should, should have had it and would catch most of those. 
Atlanta now leading 20 to 3 over Philadelphia there in the third quarter. On second down, Plunkett wants to go upstairs again. And just over the head of Todd Christensen, the Raiders along the sideline wanted an interference call. Donnie Shell had the coverage, and they were scratching at one another a little bit. Well, those real good, strong, and free safeties, they know where those officials are. If they're going to do a little scratching at you, they're going to... And he actually, they were had a little contact going before we picked it up. I don't think there was anything illegal after the ball got there. We'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Jay Randolph and John Brody, the Coliseum. Pittsburgh leading 3-0. Third down and 10 for the Raiders. Pluck it. Jim throws when he's seasoned. He stands in there, and when he fires that ball, he does so before the receiver, in this case, Ramwell, has a chance to make his final move. It's a 32 or 33-yard ball thrown in the air. You've got to throw it before the man makes his final break perfect. And a pickup of 24, and then now two out of nine on third down conversions. That was a very big play. Plunkett gives it to Allen. Allen has had a tough day. The Steelers have done a good job against him. Gary Dunn, the nose man, that time number 67, made the stop. 36 yards on 11 carries well, for Marcus Allen. These guys, their football life is on the line, and they're playing like it. Now we said back at the beginning of this telecast that there was a playoff atmosphere for this one. 3.40 to go, third quarter. Steelers leading 3 to nothing. Second down and eight at the 28 for the Raiders. Like look, it may have audible here. He goes to the far sideline. Too tall, intending it for Doki Williams. Robin Cole was roaring down on Jim Plunkett. John, I know you've admired Plunkett since his days at Stanford, and that's not because you both went to school there, but because you really feel this man has done a tremendous job over the years. Well, I think everyone has his ups and downs as a quarterback, but I think this man has persisted uh, when everyone uh, was in disagreement with whether or not he could play and has come on to put two Super Bowls in, in the Raider pocket, so I'd, I'd say that's okay. This is third and eight at the 28. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Safety blitz. And they go to Hawkins. And Hawkins is very, very close to the first down. Situation, what do you do? Fourth down and about one yard or less for a first down. The fans here want him to go. Donnie Shell stopped Hawkins just shy. Well, it's a little bit more shy than I thought it was. The spot is about a yard and a half back, but they're having to go anyway. <laughs> They'll go with the double tight end alignment as Casper number 87 has come in. They've got about a half a yard for the first down. Three tight ends now as Derek Jensen is out there, number 31. Plunkett hands off to Allen. It is close. Allen looked like he got very close to the 20-yard line. If they spot it there, he'd have the first down. But, sure. yep, they're spotting it at the 21. Well, the Steelers rise up, led by Dunn, 67. Again, it's the case of the Steelers winning the ball game at the line of scrimmage. There comes a time when you, you have to move people off. They did not. Everybody's hanging tough, and there are no holes to fly. A lot of credit there to David Little, who also helped out with the stop. Marcus Allen sitting on his helmet, looking out at the scene here at the Coliseum with 2.29 to go in the third quarter, and Pittsburgh leading 3 to nothing. The Steelers and the Raiders, two of pro football's quintessential teams, two of the great teams with remarkable traditions.
the pitch back coming to Abercrombie. He's pulled down at the 23 by McElroy, who has really played himself a football game today. He's been there time and time again. Well, he's got to be, because they don't have any cornerbacks that can contain, and if he's not there, there will be no one. And uh, he's been a little late on a few occasions, but he is a tough nut. Maybe that's why he's going to throw ball also. They put, a, they put a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, and it's tough for a free safety to get up there in time. At the 24-yard line, second down and seven, a minute and 50 to go in the third quarter. Malone had a lot of time and completes it on a comebacker to Lips. Lips came back up the field and made a nice catch to pick up nine. Al Zato put the pressure on Malone. Well, that's good staying in there on Mark's part because Al Zato, number 77, gets by his man, and uh, he's done that on three occasions. When he does, it's a, it's a tough show for number 16. Al Zato, who came here from Cleveland in April of 82. Two clubs making a trade to bring the big man to the Raiders. First and ten, Abercrombie, Abercrombie, good yardage across the 40-yard line. Mike Davis, the strong safety, number 36 on the tackle. Abercrombie holding on to that football. Oh, he's a very talented musician. Tell me he sings like a bird. I'm not sure what kind of bird, but they say he can really sing. Not the big bird. Not, not the big bird, no. <laughs> Second down and four coming up. Half a minute to play, third quarter. The only scoring, a 26-yard field goal by Gary Anderson in the first quarter for the Steelers. It is complete to Abercrombie. Gets the block at the 50. He's at the 40. One man to beat. Cuts it in. And Abercrombie is down at the two-yard line. Lester Hayes made the saving tackle. Jay, that's the big play we were talking about. The Raiders have blitzed on several occasions. That's the first time that Malone has really been able to take advantage of it. The right play called at the right time. It's a running screen pass. No one is really left to make the play once he gets past McElroy. Lester Hayes comes over from way over on the left side, one yard short of a touchdown. 59-yard play. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. of his career Abercrombie 59 yards Stallworth not in the lineup has a back problem don't know whether he's going to be able to play anymore or not first and goal it was Pollard touchdown Frank Pollard sixth touchdown of the 84 season the Steelers get the big play and a big score here in the opening moment of the fourth quarter. How often it happens where you have your big chance, and they did, fourth down and one yard one yard to go, somewhere around the 20-yard line, 22-yard line. They don't pick it up. Pittsburgh comes right back with a big play, perfect call at the perfect time. And they put seven points on the board and go ahead 10 nothing if he can kick it. Gary Anderson will attempt the point out of the hold of Craig Colquitt. The Steelers in a must-win situation. Looking at becoming the AFC Central champions if they can win here. And they would send the Raiders on the road to Seattle next weekend. Anderson has it right up the middle. And with 14.56 remaining to be played here in the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Pittsburgh Steelers are shutting out the Railers. The score at the moment, 10 to nothing. You know, there would be some concern as to whether or not Pollard made it over the goal line as he's falling just goes out of our view as to whether he took that ball and hit the goal line with it or not. The official said he did. It's 10 zip. Looked like he took that ball and just tried to get it to the line and did. 
The kick coming down, and this is Doki Williams. Gets away at the 20. Cuts it up at the 25 and out to the 28-yard line before Chris Brown made the tackle. 18-yard return. More action from the Coliseum coming up. Tom Flores, his sixth year as head coach of the Raiders, a record of 66 and 31 coming into today's play. His team being shut out here, 10 to nothing. Look at Throwing to the short man, the tight end, Christensen. Christensen at the 35, penalty marker goes down. Christensen was tackled by David Little, number 50. Pushing off. Last five possessions for the Raiders. The Raiders trying to get something going here. They have to. Number 46 on the offense. Still first down. Yeah, the man who received the ball was guilty of the infraction. And the tough thing to do, Jay, when you need to score points, is not know what you can do offensively. And the Raiders haven't been effective at any area of their ball game today offensively. And uh, so they're kind of picking them out of a hat at this point, hoping something sticks. <laughs> Jim Plunkett has taken over for Mark Wilson. First down, 20, after the penalty. Plunkett throwing, and quick catch at the 33 by Barnwell. Boy, did he go way up to make that play. Wayne Woodruff, nothing he could do. This is what Jim does so well. He'll stand in there and take all the time he can before he delivers that ball into the face of a rush. He knows his time is limited here. Gary Dunn hits him just after he throws the ball, but he does give his receiver, Barnwell, Bramwell a chance to get down and inside of Dwayne Woodruff. Now they've only got about two and a half, three yards to go for a first. 14 yard pickup. On second down. That's Marcus Allen. Allen short of the first down at about the 36 yard line. Robin Cole on the tackle. You know, I guess, John, it's called rising to the challenge. Allen has rushed for a total of 417 yards over the past four games. The Raiders have won them all. He's averaged 104 yards a game and just under six yards a carry. But today, he has had his hands full with this Pittsburgh Steeler bunch. Well, we've said it throughout the afternoon. Uh, Pittsburgh is playing about as well as they can on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and that makes it very difficult for a running back. Third down... A long one. The Raiders, two out of ten in third down conversions. Plunkett's going to put it up. Going for everything. And it's too long. Barnwell, the intended receiver, and he might have had an opportunity as he had a step on Woodruff, but Plunkett was a little too long with it. He had a couple steps to the inside, yes, and that was another blitz. The Raiders have gone broke on most every occasion when they've tried to beat the Blitz with a long pass. There's Lips, just 10 yards away from the single-season punt return record. He could break it right here as it is time for Ray Guy to put it in play. Lips comes up, takes it at the 25. And now a whistle. Stopping play. Apparently, did he put up a fair catch signal? I didn't see it, but that's what they're saying. Well, I don't. He didn't think it because he's only fair caught two all year, and he's run back a whole bunch. Lips with a chance for the record, but not this time. Now, what happened here? Well, you be your own judge. It was ruled that he called for a fair catch. We couldn't see the move. Well, we think that's what they ruled, John. Uh, we're, we're asking, trying to find out. Chuck Knoll along the sideline there, talking with one of the officials. Lips today. Get word that Hinkle has a knee problem, but they think that he'll be back. 38-yard punt. Steelers leading at 10 to nothing. That's Ouija Thompson going in motion. The call to Abercrombie coming the other way. 
Abercrombie gets to the 28-yard line. Mike Davis, number 36, on the tackle. The Raiders being shut out here this afternoon. Last time they were shut out, John, was in October of 82 by the Kansas City Chiefs, 27-0. Ten to nothing. The Steelers leading the Raiders. Steelers on the 29-yard line, second down and seven. The shadows beginning to engulf this giant stadium, the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. Pollard out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Matt Millen, 55, on the tackle. Whoo, what a field day for Kansas City. This telecast presented by authority of the NFL. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Raiders and the NFL is prohibited. Tom Flores threw 92 touchdown passes in his career with the Oakland Raiders. Now coaching the L.A. Raiders. On third down and four. Malone gets it out to Ehrenberg, and Ehrenberg has got the first down. The little guy from Colgate doing the job, Otis McKinney, 23 on the tackle. Ehrenberg's not very big, 5'10", 200 pounds, six-yard pickup on the play. Well, he comes out late, and he makes it tough on the, on the defensive secondary to know whether or not he's going to be an intended receiver or whether he's going to help pick up one of those defensive linemen. He's fooled him two or three times, and by the time McKinney can get there, it's just too late. John, we've checked with the NFL referee observer here and get word that they did call a fair catch on that play, although it was very hard to pick up from our vantage point, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Abercrombie at the 40, at the 45, out to the 47-yard line. And the Steelers, again controlling the line of scrimmage, Mike Davis, number 36, made the tackle. And the clock is running now with 10 minutes and 40 seconds to play. If the Steelers win it, they are the champions of the AFC Central. They'll have a week off, and the Raiders are going to have to go to Seattle. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Just trying to help my fellow teammate. Wide receivers set to the far side. Second down and two. The Steelers operating from their own 47. Penalty markers go down. I think that's going to be called on the offense. Ball start. Number 63 on the offense. Field second down. Pete Rostowski. And that'll put the ball back at the 38-yard line. Ten oh eight to play. Ten to nothing. Steelers. Lester Hayes has a rib problem. Ted Watts, number twenty, has taken over at cornerback for the eight-year veteran from Texas A&M. Second down and six at the forty-two. A little delay to Pollard. Got about a yard. Howie Long, number 75, wrapped him up. And a third down conversion coming for the Steelers. They've been 50% this afternoon, 6 out of 12. A big, big crowd sitting in, and up to now, they haven't had much to cheer about as the Raiders are shut out 10 to nothing. Hayes comes back in at left corner, Watts goes out. We come back in the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles and get a look at these Steelers with Mark Malone at quarterback facing the third down and five. And the catch is incomplete. There is no catch. It is incomplete. All right. The official along the far sideline called it. That was Wayne Capers, number 80, who had come in, second-year man from Kansas, Tried to trap that ball. 
McElroy had the coverage. He almost did make this catch. Let's take well, a look. Mark had to throw the ball a little low because he knew it was double coverage. He doesn't want to give Mike Davis a chance to come in and pick it off in front of him because the, I'm sure the Steelers feel right now controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides the way they have been. It's going to take a big turnover or a lucky break for the Raiders to get themselves on top. Lee Montgomery set to receive the punt that'll come from Colquitt. Montgomery looking up into the sun. This is a booming kick that goes into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Next weekend, Sports World looks at the ups and downs and the upsets and champions in a special 84 boxing review. Well, you know, it's been the hottest division all year, the AFC West, and the wild card game comes up next weekend, beginning to look like the Raiders will be in Seattle. Check your local listings for the day and the time. If they win, of course, they'd be right here, but they're down 10 to nothing with 9.05 left to play. Plunkett. Over the middle, and the pass thrown a little bit behind Oki Williams, but he might have been able to make the catch. Today's game is brought to you by the 1985 Jetta, the new affordable German road car from Volkswagen. By Sears, where you'll find great values. There's more for your life at Sears. And by Avis. If you hate to wait, you'll love Avis. With John Brody, Jay Randolph here in the Coliseum where the Steelers are winning it 10 to nothing. Second down for Plunkett and the Raiders. And almost intercepted. Intended for Williams and Sam Washington was right there and almost took it away. John, I'm wondering, that's a... In baseball, we'd call that a tough sun field right now because of of where the ball uh, is on the field for Plunkett. Well, it is, and it's not for his receivers, which is no. a very important uh, point, but it is for the quarterback, and Jim's got to be able to get set and see some, uh, see his receivers, and that sun's right in his eyes. I don't get the feeling Jim has a pattern that he feels very confident of throwing right now. Here they come, safety blitz. And they do a job on him. Number 21, Eric Williams, coming up over the top to make the play. Woo. They figured out his cadence. And uh, you can't get a good enough a, a jump that good unless you've figured out they're going on two, they're going on one, or whatever they are. And they timed it just perfectly. They let Plunkett set the line, and they were on their way. They, they timed it just right. That's what happens when they do. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. That reminded me of a fellow named Larry Wilson who used to do that for the Cardinals back in the late 60s and early 70s. Ray Guy punting from the end zone and Lips with a chance, but this punt is very poor punt that comes out of bounds up at the 41-yard line. No chance for Lips. I wonder if somebody got a hand on that ball. No, they did not, but Ray has not had his best punting day today, and it's very rare when you see him have one like this. A 29-yard punt a moment ago by Guy gives the Steelers the football at the Raider 41. The Steelers a pretty happy bunch, shutting out the Raiders 10 to nothing with 8.25 to go. Thompson goes in motion to the far side, and they give it up the middle to Abercrombie. No gain on the play. Bill Fickell, number 71, second-year man from Rutgers on the tackle from the middle guard spot. First time we've really had a chance to even mention Bill Fickell's name, and he's had such an outstanding season. He and Reggie Kinlaw trading off. He hasn't been a factor in the pass rush, and they have run effectively when he's been in there. Made the all-rookie team last year, played at Rutgers, came out of St. Francis High School in Brooklyn. Malone with time, and a catch at the 30-yard line by Lips. He is an acrobatic gentleman, isn't he? McElroy couldn't do much with that one. Well, he's making some catches that are beyond the call. You see, he jumps right past uh, Lester Hayes. This ball is thrown, and it looks like it's going to be a certain one bouncer, but he keeps control of his body somehow, keeps the ball from hitting the ground first. They've got a first and 10 inside the 30. 
13 yard pickup as Lips comes out. Number one draft choice was injured earlier. He's come back and really done a job. Abercrombie. Abercrombie just about back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Davis, number 36, on the tackle. See where they're going to spot the ball down at the 20, 28. I'm impressed with the way Pittsburgh structured their game plan run-wise. You haven't heard uh, Brad Van Pelt's name, and you haven't seen an awful lot of Rod Martin, except in passing situations. They've tried to isolate them, let their backs pick the holes as they saw fit. They've done an outstanding job. Abercrombie, 99 yards on 24 carries. Second down, 10. Here's Abercrombie, over 100, as he got that ball to the 19-yard line. Van McElroy ran him out of bounds, and we've got a low-level look at Abercrombie in action. Some days, that's what it looks like from down there if you're sitting in a defensive back's position about 14 feet high. So it's not the exact duplicate, but pretty close. Huh? Yep. Ball is just inside the 25-yard line. 6.21 to play. Abercrombie with 102 yards on 25 rushes. An outstanding day for Walter Abercrombie. And he holds on to that football. It's a big factor for you. This time it's Pollard. And Pollard is near the 20. Rod Martin, the linebacker, 53, made the tackle after a six-yard gain. Well, it's got to be a concern of Tom Flores the way the Steelers have shut down the Raider offense this afternoon. You bet it is. This is not a game that uh, the Raiders did not feel they had to win. They knew, they knew how important it was for them because it does two things. It takes them away from home, and it also makes them rekindle whatever momentum they had going into this ball game. Anderson made one first quarter 26 yards missed one in the third quarter from 39. This one will be a 37 yard attempt. It's on the way and it's good. And that will make it 13 to nothing. The Pittsburgh Steelers five minutes 35 seconds remaining. Time on the board. The Raiders would have to hurry. The Steelers, though, with a victory, go to nine and seven. They get a week off and they win the AFC Central. And if they do happen to win, I don't think you could say they backed in. No, indeed. A low kick, rounding down at the 15-yard line. Montgomery picking it up out at the 25-yard line. He is wrapped hard by number 54, Craig Bingham. Well, we'll take another timeout. 5.26 remaining. 13 nothing Steelers. Last time the Steelers shut out a team was back in 81 when they did it to the Rams. You know, talking about the Rams, the Steelers have played so well on the West Coast, somebody ought to consider having them move out here. I mean, they whipped the 49ers, they're whipping the Raiders, they handled the Rams, they demolished the, the Chargers. It's too been many, a lot of fun out too here. Too many people are moving anyway, John, these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, Philadelphia's going to stay. Here's the pass going to Marcus Allen. And you wonder why they haven't thrown to Allen more today. That's only his second catch. Brian Hinkle, 53, the linebacker, making the play. Remind you again, the last time that the Raiders were shut out was in 1982. 27-0 by the Kansas City Chiefs. 13-0 Pittsburgh. Second down and four coming up. There are certain times when a team is a little more than a touchdown behind that you get the feeling they're coming back, but I don't get the same feeling today. Uh, Plunkett trying to make some magic late. Let's see if he can do it. That's the tight end Christensen. I think he's got the first down by about a yard. David Little, number 50, made the stop. Little, the inside linebacker, number 50. His brother, of course, a great star in this league for a long time. They've got, to, they've got to hurry. They know they're inside the five-minute mark. Plunkett throwing short again, and it is complete at the 41-yard line, this time to Frank Hawkins, the running back, number 27. 
Robin Cole, 56 on the tackle. Clock running with 4.41 to play. 13 to nothing, Pittsburgh. Plunkett again coming short in the pass poorly thrown intended for Doki Williams. Washington had the coverage. Jim has thrown about four bad balls when he's had his weight on his back foot and he hasn't been able to set up, plant, and throw. And that comes from getting accustomed to seeing all those big fellas in there and forgetting about them. And it's hard to do when you haven't played for a while. Dave Dalby, the great veteran center from UCLA, never missed a game playing in number 189 today, is injured. We'll be back with more from the Coliseum after this. Jay Randolph and John Brody, you know, you really have to hand it to Pittsburgh. I saw them beat San Francisco on the seventh week of the season up at Candlestick. They've come in here today and controlled the game just like they did on that afternoon. Well, they've gone from pillar to post when you take a look at the teams they've lost to, including Indianapolis, and then some of those that they've beaten. Uh, you just don't know what to expect. I don't know how many expected this to happen, but uh, they're winning everywhere. They have won everywhere this afternoon. Here's Plunkett throwing and completing it to Christensen. Christensen down at the 45-yard line. That's a first down for the Raiders. Two touchdowns and two extra points would win this game for them. I know one group that's rooting for them. Well, look at the total yard statistics here today. Who would have thought that? Plunkett throwing again, and the running back, Hawkins, is inside the 40 at the 39 before Brian Hinkle made the play, and there is a penalty marker down. Red Cashin and his crew will sort matters out. Holding against the Steelers. You see number 85, Williams, there talking things over with Tom Flores. Tom was a backup quarterback in Kansas City. Finally did a lot of damage for the Raiders. Holding before the pass, number 31 on the defense, field first down. Ball goes against Donnie Shell, who today got his first interception ever against the Raiders in the 42nd of his long career. This Steeler defensive unit has been some kind of tough this afternoon. Going to be a first down on the call at the 40-yard line. And this is the best movement the Raiders have really put forth in this second half and really throughout the ball game. Uh, and it's funny, whenever people start hurrying up, getting out of the huddle fast, it puts an added pressure on the defense, in my opinion. I think Jim will continue doing that. Well, I think Plunkett felt that he could complete the short pass, and he's moved them very well on this drive. was able to get by the cornerback. Face mask, number 31 on the defense. Henley is the play. First down. First down as Eric Williams made the tackle. Take a look at Christensen. That was what they might call an unintentional face mask. Wasn't called anyway. First and goal from the one. 13 points down and 3.52 left. Earlier in this game, the Raiders had the fourth and short yardage and didn't get the job done. Now they've got goal to go. Plunkett throws incomplete. Hmm, that's an interesting call. First and goal to go at the one as he tried to get it to Hawkins. Well, they know they have to save time. And they figured that if they could get it in in a four or five second time frame, it would be helpful. They obviously think they can move the ball on the ground. But if they were stopped, it would take another 25 seconds off the clock. I do think they'll keep it down now, but they haven't been able to make a yard whenever they've tried. That's right. Look at almost had the first touchdown pass of the season to a wide receiver for him on that 39-yarder a moment ago. Second down, goal to go. Hawkins, no indeed. I'll tell you, look at these Steelers. 
They're fired up. Number 78 there making the big play was Catano, who is in there in the goal line defense, along with Gary Dunn, 67. And now it's third and goal to go from the two. They've almost thrown him back. If it were earlier in the game, it would be a passing situation. But now I think it's either way. Let's see if Allen tries one of his high hurdle jobs. No, he's going in motion. Pluckett rolling. Well, that didn't work out very well. And it's fourth and goal at the two. It could not be illustrated better how much trouble the Raiders are having getting back to the line of scrimmage when it's in, a, in the tight quarters. Tom Flores. Trying to decide what to do on this call. Here's the most important call of the game. Earlier we mentioned that the Raiders had fourth down and about half a yard didn't get it. They're being shut out. Here we are. Too much time. Pittsburgh calling a timeout. Did they call a timeout or did we have too much time? They were calling a timeout because they were confused. Plunkett ran Marcus Allen in motion and there was a pick play that was uh, intended and he actually was going to come free as you saw him do. That's an alert play. A team that's confused. It has the presence of mind to call timeout with about two seconds left on the clock, and that's what Donnie Shell did. Uh, that's why he's a pro bowler. That clock was just coming to zero, and they had the problem. Take a look. Now you see Plunkett's got Marcus Allen moving in motion. Shell sees a little confusion on the play. You can tell Ron Johnson out there, number 29, wasn't certain who to grab. Timeout, regroup, fourth and two. 83,056 here in the Coliseum watching this one this afternoon. Chuck Knoll, 1966, he went to work with Don Shula in Baltimore. He took over the Steelers in 69, has led them to four Super Bowls. You know, he drafted, they drafted 14 offensive rookies. All right, I mean, they're on. 14 rookies offensively, 11 of them made the team. So you talk about a rebuilding job offensively, they're doing it. Next week, we invite you to check your local listings for the day and time. Will the Raiders play here or will they play in Seattle? The wild card game on NBC. All right, we're back at it. Fourth and goal to go. gets caught and he can't tell both the reception and the foot placement. The points are on the board as we give you another look. The One end line. In. No, the end line is that white section that comes into the green and he got credit. The point after by Chris Barr and this one is still very much up for grabs. Fourth and goal to go. The Raiders are credited with the touchdown. It's 13 to 7. Look once again at what was called a touchdown. You got it right. It was called a touchdown. That's a mistake they very seldom make, but they made one. 75 yards in 10 plays. Plunkett moved them well. the defending world champions. Remember last year? Tampa. Marcus Allen. What a play. 
74-yard touchdown run. The Raiders beat Washington 38 to 9. They'd like to do it again. One year ago, this coming January. Well, it's time where some people would say, hey, what about an onside kick? It's too early. There's still 310 left. They've got their timeouts left, so they will kick away. The Steelers are lined up set for the onside kick if it would come, but it doesn't, as you mentioned, John. Comes out. There has been an official explanation, and it is, you know, some people have stated, hey, maybe he was pushed out. You judge for yourself. Well, he had a hand on him. <laughs> well, this big crowd of better than 80,000 now starts roaring for the defense. Pittsburgh 13, the Raiders 7. The pitch back comes to Pollard. Hit right at the line of scrimmage by Matt Millen. Millen calling a timeout. Does he get it? He does. Tell you, in, uh, in Pittsburgh and Seattle, I don't think they uh, they saw that, that, that call the way the officials did. Bring you up to date on all the scores. The Redskins knocked the Cardinals out of the playoffs. Cincinnati put the pressure on Pittsburgh with a big win. Tampa Bay finishes up in fine fashion. Chicago, they're in the playoffs, 30 to 13 over Detroit. New England defeated Indianapolis, 16 to 10. It was Cleveland over Houston. Green Bay handling the Minnesota Vikings. They've had a tough year. Look at Kansas City, 42 to 14. They're in the fourth quarter down in San Diego. Atlanta, 20 to 10 over Philadelphia. They're in the fourth quarter. Here we have two minutes and 52 seconds left to go. Pittsburgh, 13, the Raiders, 7. Tom Flores hoping his Raiders will have the opportunity to win it. And if they win it, they would have the wild card game here next weekend. If they lose it, they go to Seattle. The Steelers must win to take the title in the AFC Central. If they lose it, Cincinnati's in. Second down and 10. Mark Malone and the Steelers. We've just gotten word that the official on the play said that the man was not pushed out. <laughs> Chuck Knowles' thoughts about the activity here in the Coliseum this afternoon. to go. Malone. And incomplete at the 32-yard line. Haynes, number 22, had the coverage against Capers. Wayne Capers. Young offensive receiver. Plays the tip ball very well. Looks like he's going to come down with the reception. But Mike Haynes knocks it out of his hands at the last moment. So it appears the Raiders will have good field position. Otis McKinney tipped that ball. Craig Colquitt, the punt. Montgomery is downfield. The Raiders are going to get the football. Barring some problem on the play. Montgomery at the 39. Montgomery out to the 45, to the 47-yard line, and that's where the Raiders will get it. A 40-yard punt 
An eight-yard return, two and a half to play. We show you the touchdown for the Raiders once again. Well, we, we had some question as to whether maybe he was pushed out because that was the only explanation we could figure out. The official said no. He certainly didn't get both feet in, but he got six points. And they got the point after. Plunkett drops back onto the turf here in the Coliseum. His club is 53 yards away from a score that would tie the game, and an extra point would win it. 13-7, Steelers over the Raiders. Two and a half to go. These are the first two interceptions he's ever had against the Raider organization. He had one in the first half that kept them from making a touchdown. This time, when Plunkett had to duck under a real fierce pass rush, he didn't have a chance to locate Shell, trying to make a good thing out of a bad situation, and that's what happens so often when you try to do that. Two minutes and 24 seconds remaining, and they start chanting for the defense again. And the Raiders very adept at coming up with the football. Malone handing it off to Abercrombie. He's across midfield. McElroy with a tackle. Six-yard pickup. Timeout Raiders. Well, I want to thank our spotters, Tim Tallman and Shep Goldberg, Joe Costanza, and all his crew handling our stats this afternoon and helping here in the booth an old friend Chuck Panama and Jim Pels. And, of course, the sights and sounds have been brought your way this afternoon by Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Finkel. Our executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NBC's football is Ted Nathanson. And today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by John Gonzalez, our technical director, Dick Roker. Our thanks to all the crew here in the Coliseum this afternoon have brought you the sights and sounds of this one it's been a dandy on this final regular season Sunday of the NFL. Donnie Shell, mm -hmm. something special out of South Carolina State. A lot of people were very, very uh, surprised that he didn't make the Pro Bowl. But when your team is eight and seven and and just a little better than 500, not as many players as deserve to go make that team. This guy is an opportunist. He's hit more quarterbacks than he has intercepted balls, and he's already got 43 of those, so. Carl McCarthy, our production stage manager here at the Coliseum this afternoon. Always a pleasure to be with him. Second down and four. Short of the first down is Abercrombie. And the clock is going to move down to the two-minute warning. Tackle made by Matt Millen, number 55. The two-minute warning is given to both benches. Chuck Knowles, Pittsburgh Steelers have a 13-7 advantage. Now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Third down and two for Pittsburgh. And they do not get the first down. Penalty marker goes down as Pollard came up short. And let's see what the call might be. Ryan Bucket and this is old, number 91 of the defense. Uh-oh, offside against the Raiders. Brad Van Pelt, number 91. Well, they would have had a situation where... 91 on the defense, first down. The Steelers would have had to put the ball up and put it away, but now it's a first down at the 41-yard line with 156 remaining. You'll see the Raiders come after the football. They'll start grabbing it. They know they've only got one timeout left. There's a minute and 56 
three downs. They can get it to within 30 seconds if they never put the ball in the air. And with no timeouts, that's a long way to travel. Second man through Abercrombie to the 39-yard line. And... Now they indicate a timeout called by Pittsburgh. I don't think so. I don't know why he would have indicated Pittsburgh. This has to be a Raider timeout. This is a Raider timeout. The Raiders now have none left. That's right, and the Steelers would have two. John, there were a couple of instances in this game when the Steelers had opportunities didn't get the job done all they had was a 26 yard field goal but then things turned around for them and they got a big play and a score and then of course a rather big break came the way of the Raiders on their score this game has really been bigger than a six point differential yep. these fellas have won the ball game at the line of scrimmage both sides we've mentioned it several times they have thrown better than the Raiders have Donnie Shell has been extremely opportunistic and I think more than anything if you take a look the Steelers were up to the they were up to the challenge today and uh, can't say enough good things about the way they played. Well the Steelers if they hold on are going to be the AFC Central champions and they're going to have the week off and the Raiders are going to have to think about going into Seattle and beating the Seahawks. Second down and nine. Bootleg by Malone. And he wisely stayed in bounds. Didn't try to get anything more out of it as he slid down at the 33-yard line. McElroy popped down on him number 26, and the clock is running with 1.35 to go. A pickup of six. John, great being with you here this afternoon. Uh, happy holidays to Sue and all your gang, and we'll see you down in Palm Springs the second week in January for the Bob Hope Desert Classic. You sure will. These Raiders will be going to Seattle as something very, very unusual happens here, and we've had some things in that category in the last few minutes. Pollard inside the minute mark first down well it wasn't a very good day for Pete Axnell he took the Raiders gave the points but that doesn't make any difference to the Pittsburgh Steelers this has been quite an afternoon for the bunch from the Steel City and their fans can be very very proud as their team is going to take the Central Division title Disappointing day for Cincinnati, of course, as they did all they could do. They won and then put the pressure on. And the Raiders and the Seahawks from the King Dome next weekend. You'll check your local listings for the day and time and watch that one right here with us on NBC. Last play. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers have taken too much time. Chuck Knoll. The gentleman from Cleveland, 16th year as the Steelers head coach, and he's got to be very prideful, feel very good down deep this afternoon. Tom Flores across the way. I think he's concerned more about, more about the way his team is playing right now than he is about the loss, although they have to go to Seattle if they were playing well it wouldn't be that big a problem but the way they're playing and the way Seattle plays at home they do have a problem this is going to do it Pittsburgh rushing for 197 yards this afternoon really controlling the line of scrimmage the victory 13 to 7 for the Pittsburgh Steelers AFC Central Division champions congratulations to Chuck Knoll and his bunch. A very, very big win as the Steelers come out west and get the job done. Stay tuned after these messages from your local stations.